Hello everyone, welcome to the Sweeney Show, Business and Law Podcast. My name is David Sweeney and joining me here today is Siobhan Mac Sweeney. Uh, Siobhan is a nurse and midwife. Uh, Siobhan, you're very welcome. Thank you, David. Lovely to be here. Good. Yeah, so look, uh, I know you've been in the Law Society Gazette just recently and I think it's the July edition and I was checking your online, your website, it's uh, MCS management is that correct case management case management mcs case management so th this this is a really topical and really interesting subject at the moment especially in any solicitors in medical negligence or any any solicitors in litigation uh where they need expert reports uh, from someone in the you know in the medical industry so your your history is your qualified nurse and midwife that's right i did my training in cork and from to the league in west cork Lovely. did my training in cork city and moved on then to the uk where i did midwifery returned to Dublin and I worked in Tala Hospital as manager at night. So as a hospital manager in night duty. Okay. Very busy hospital, brilliant hospital, band one hospital, a teaching hospital. And it was it was there that formed me, my career really, Tala Hospital. And how did you then, were you, uh, was your mind open or how did you come across the legal side of these, of, uh, uh, this was, your medical day-to-day -day interactions. Where did you mm -hmm. the knowledge of how where the legal background comes into it? I left Tala Hospital early to pursue a different career. I was always interested in the medical legal side of things because I had seen an awful lot of families that had gone through a catastrophic injury in the hospital. We would have had serious road traffic accidents into resus for five or six hours onto theatre, into ICU that could be there for a month, two months then out to the ward for extensive rehabilitation, then on, their journey went on, then to the rehabilitation hospital. And I often wondered what happened to those families afterwards. So I left Halle early. I trained in Latouche and did all my expert witness training there. I did the uh, report writing, courtroom skills, Susie Shine and Barry Ward were the two tutors and they're amazing. So Latouche was my first stop. And then I traveled to the UK and I trained as a case manager. I joined the um, Case Management Society UK and the British Association of Brain Injury Case Managers and also the Brain Injury Group. They provide a lot of training in case management. And um, I did that and then I returned and set up MCS Case Management four years ago. And I've been working in case management since and I have clients countrywide. So of catastrophic injuries. Yeah, if a solicitor was in, had a medical agent's case and they wanted to report and say an expert nursing opinion, that that's where you would come in, is it? Yes. Um, having worked in case management for quite a while now and having the cases countrywide, I provide cost of care reports. But because I do the case management, I know the costs of everything. So I can implement that skill into those reports. I also would do a witness of fact report, maybe for some of my cases and case management that are going on for a periodic payment order. Also, I've been asked to do an actual case management report, which is brilliant because you can bring your skills into what you know will have to be bought in for that client in years to come. And, and also the um, quantum reports and the causation and liability reports. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. So you, would your report also take into account in the standard of care and omissions in care, maybe? Yes, yes. So if, if a solicitor is putting together a file to send to you uh, the brief, like what, what do you need? Because this is always, you know, it can cause delays when you're requesting records and notes from hospitals and then maybe the instruction letter to yourself is not clear. Like what are the main things that you like to see uh, when you get an instruction letter in from a solicitor and what should be enclosed in that, uh, in that brief? Um, the instruction letter and then the medical reports and the hospital reports, the occupational therapist reports, maybe a school report, because I would always put in the cost of a private tutor for a child who has cerebral palsy and mum is at home, she maybe has two or three other children. So anything that will give that mother a break in the afternoon. So something like that is always included. And then the therapies have to be costed. And so I will dip into those specialists and bring out the best and cost it and put it into my reports. Okay, so you're, you're, you're reviewing for the standard of care and maybe a negligence may have occurred in the, in, the, in the nursing, but you're also then giving the future costs and the future care needs. That's correct. Yeah, and that's expensive care. Yeah. Like one of my clients has, um, he's an acquired brain injury and he was 10 years in a community nursing unit when I met his family and they said, Siobhan, we want him out of here. And I said, but he's getting excellent 24-hour care where he is. It was eight miles from the family home. 
and they said no they wanted him home they had the house adapted so i had to go into that community unit a beautiful unit i might add hse run and i told the director of nursing what the plan was and she literally laughed and said there's no way that'll happen siobhan i had already gone into the parents and said you know what you're asking is huge and if the nurse doesn't turn up on christmas eve you know this may happen so no we went along so it was a, a, a planned process his discharge we met with the hsc we met with the outreach team in dunleary hospital and we met with the care provider that i had chosen that would deliver the care at home so he's now home two years there's 30 staff involved in his care now some are part-time part-timers but there's 30 staff involved in his care and his family are very happy that he's now nursed at home yeah that, that's really interesting it just kind of brings about two issues or two questions maybe from for me that one you know the court case is pretty protracted and prolonged heavy legal experience for both sides uh well especially for the individual but and and the uh their families um but when the court case is over and if it's been successful yes there might be a financial compensation and all that but what, what happens the day after the court case is finished you know the, the, the families and the, the actual injured party they, they still have to get on with the rest of their life well how does that start or what do you what do you bring to that part of the process um, yeah, the family's um, general situation doesn't change while the compensation is, is marvellous that you can buy in top equipment, assistive technology, you can bring in people into the home to do music therapy, for example, uh, maybe buy a dog for the disabled, Like, but like at the same time, their journey is only beginning again. They have a new journey now because they have this pot of money and it has to be spent wisely. So I usually visit the family, do an initial needs assessment, uh, liaise with the solicitor, liaise with the wards of court, and usually we'd visit the wards of court and get the introduction going between the registrar and the wards of court and the family. Then I would set out a plan, a year or two yearly plan. And every invoice is, is you know, examined for the words of court before it goes there, everything goes through my office. Yeah, ju- sorry, can I just ask you there, just for some, maybe yeah. it might be a lay person watching this, like wh- when you say ward of court, what do you mean by that? Um, the president of the high court oversees the wards of court and the money that the family gets is lodged there. And thereafter, the funds are distributed from the wards of court to buy in the equipment, the appliances, the nursing care, the care assistant care. Maybe it's a personal assistant for the person. Mm. If you're a young teenager, we'd get a personal assistant for them. So that's where it all is monitored and the family have access then to liability. Um, they get their reports and they know exactly what's in the fund and how it's going. And we have to watch that fund very closely. Yeah, it makes sense that that's an intermediary or a, yeah. an overseeing party looking at the monies, how they're yeah, being spent. Absolutely, it makes it very transparent. <clears throat> And uh, would you mind then telling me maybe some of the type of cases that you've worked in previously and where your job uh, comes into it? Right. I have one case at the moment. Uh, She's an acquired brain injury. And when I met the family first, she was three years in a nursing home. And we transferred her into a lovely brain injury unit in Piedmont under the expert um, tease of Dr. Eugene Wallace. He's a rehabilitation consultant and his team there are currently looking after her. So we had a huge multidisciplinary team meeting recently because the family would like her to be nursed and in would, her own bungalow. Would that lady have been involved? So, so would that have come through a court case which she'd been injured? That in came case? through a full and final settlement. Okay. So the money's there. So we're currently looking at bungalows for her and the family live two hours away from the brain injury unit. So they have, and they don't drive. So it's, it's really hard on them. So at the multidisciplinary team meeting with Dr. Eugene Wallace, we ha- now have a transition to home plan in place. So it's going to be like the other case I spoke about. We'll buy a bungalow. It will be made wheelchair accessible. We'll have to buy in all the equipment. And then we'll have a staged coming home for her. In other words, she will come home first for an hour, then later for a couple of hours then another time for for a day, like we did with the other case, and finally she'll go home for good. Again, it's it, it's it's a huge a huge ask. Wow, I, um, and just actually two things just crop up there. One with the with the last number of months we had with COVID, how have because I was 
I know you did, um, an, the, I mentioned at the start, an excellent article in the Law Society Gazette recently, and you spoke how you kind of have adjusted and pivoted your business to go online and online col consultations with the onset of COVID. But, and ask you how your business or how you've adjusted your business, but also how has COVID affected the likes of that lady and her patient care? How has everybody adjusted to that? Well, that particular lady is having her first visit from her family in her room this week. Wow. She's had no family near her since March. Now we went to the window to see her. We were allowed to go to the window and we spoke to her through the window and her sister sings to her and she reacts to singing. She has no other reaction. She only reacts to song. And when her sister sings, her face lights up. So and we're currently buying some assisted it? technology for her to help again with the singing and her reaction, how she reacts when somebody sings. So that's currently being purchased from a Cork company. I only use Irish suppliers because when the speech and language therapist sourced the um, assistive technology for her, she was giving me English suppliers and I sent her running. I said, I only use Irish companies. So we found a, a very good Cork supplier and he's coming up to install it this week. So we're looking forward to that. It's going to be exciting. How upsetting or distressing has the last number of months so been for that family? They've been distraught. They've been so distraught. And another client of mine who was in Leaving Cert in a special school, a lovely teenager, he's got cerebral palsy. He, he had to leave school as everybody else did in March. And he had a severe um, breakdown. You know, he, he really couldn't hack it at all being at home. He health. loves school. He was on Leaving Cert year. He's doing a special Leaving Cert. He had a virtual graduation, but it affected him greatly. He ended up in the mental health institution for a week. And we had to change his model of care after that. He had a personal assistant. He now has two staff 24-7 to assist with his um, mental health. So it was very sad. And he had just moved into his own apartment in the family home. Uh, that was newly built and that was really exciting and we were all thrilled that that happened in January but then his own mental health uh, deteriorated but we're getting him great help mm -hmm. and he's coming on slowly. Well that's that's very distressing to hear about those stories isn't mm -hmm. it? It's only it's only part of it I mean Inclusion Ireland did a survey and they interviewed families who had loved ones with special needs and the families all said that their situation got 100 times worse once the special school closed, closed and the therapists uh, started doing remote consultations and they couldn't do their visits to their physios, their OTs. So the families have said, and Inclusion Ireland have it out there, that uh, their situation got dramatically worse. Mm. Uh, how did you cope with your own business? How did you move it online? Is that something you needed to adjust we to and teach online. yourself? Or? We, we set up Zoom and Skype on day one, way back in March did a course in remote consultations. There was one online, we did that, and we just got up and moving. Mm. We kept working right through. I did a, a lovely interview with a man who had never used um, a video call, and um, my PA set it up with him, and then we were able to do it. It was, he was thrilled with himself. Yeah. You know, he had never used this technology, yeah, but it's, 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 it's easy. Yeah, it's a matter of having to now, isn't it? Yeah, it is. Yeah. I mean, like I was traveling to the UK a lot to conferences and everything, yeah. and now I'm quite happy to be at home and yeah. doing it online, believe me. Uh, so there has been, um, and it's interesting you say that regards, you know, choosing Irish suppliers because uh, oh, yeah. the, the history of, uh, you know, getting medical reports or expert legal reports to support medical negligence or duty, uh, drop on a standard of medical care was uh, we would go to the UK, but for a nursing report, you don't have to go to a UK. Like a lot of people go to the UK for a doctor's report because most doctors are all doctors are a part of the Irish Medical Council. They don't like giving evidence against each other. So you would source a yeah. suitable expert in the UK as well as a doctor, but for a nurse, it's slightly different. Like it, there's no issue whatsoever in instructing an Irish nurse, uh, or a, sorry, a nursing expert like yourself rather than going to UK. So there's not. No, I mean, I've met a lot of nursing experts and there's a great group in Ireland that are doing expert reports. I'm not on my own. There's many nurses doing them. And it's great to see the Irish companies supporting each other. Because when I set up MCS case management, I just thought I'd be doing case management. This was my passion. I wanted to help the families with the catastrophic injuries. And then when I started doing that, I said, OK, look, at I can do a cost of care report. So, you know, 
if you walk the walk, you can yeah. do that report. It's not, it's not hard. And um, well, so, at, at what stage of the case do you usually instruct that? Is it the early stages, midway through, or when, when, when do you come involved in the case? I like to become. I like to be involved very early, especially if child with cerebral palsy. One of my latest cases is a little chap um, in the west of Ireland who has cerebral palsy and he's nonverbal. So I said to mum, the most important person in this management, not not me, I said, it's the speech and language therapist. I said, she's going to be the person that we have to get in here and get the best technology so he can do text to speech. So he can communicate with his brother and his sister, his pals at school, and also that person that I found, the speech and language therapist, who has the expertise in assistive technology to help him. He's only age 10. She's going to go into the school. She's going to show his SNA. She's going to show his teacher. So he's going to have a whole world opened up to him in time to come. And we'll buy the best because he deserves it. And what happens in the case of, um, say you assess an individual for catastrophic injury, maybe, maybe someone like that, uh, that young man there, that, uh, but the medical needs uh, you're aware of and the cost of them, but the court case could run for five, six years. What happens in that intervening period to the, to the, to the, uh, I suppose the, the victim or the plaintiff in that case? Well, Enable Ireland is very good. You know, they have great supports. They're fantastic. They've got a brilliant AT department. They're brilliant. Headway are a great support in Ireland. Acquired Brain Injury Ireland are amazing. And then we have other companies like Spinal Injuries Ireland. I mean, they're just they're just fantastic mm -hmm. for anybody with a spinal injury in a chair, be they paralyzed from the neck down or the waist down. They are fantastic. And also we have people like Mark Pollock, who is motivational and mm -hmm. he's a and you know, he's got a Mark Pollock yeah. trust. Yeah. This is a fabulous support. And there's another very special person that I'm very friendly with, and it's Stephen Tlusky. Stephen Tlusky is an entrepreneur. He has a company called Mobility Mojo, and it is um, trip advisor for people with disabilities. Okay, well, very good. I was talking to Stephen this morning, and he's, wow. well, he's, you know, paralyzed from his neck down. He okay. had an accident and leaving cert a year. He fell off a haystack. Um, they were celebrating the leaving cert results. He's got a most gorgeous family, and Stephen is, uh, you know, a, a to-go-to person for anyone with spinal injury. He's always willing to help and he's fantastic. So we have great resources in Ireland, amazing. I promote them all. Can I, can I ask you, I, know, I suppose this is somewhat morbid or, and uh, maybe stressful or dis, dis, causing distress, that what kind of you know, incidents or accidents are you involved with or what's, what, what, what kind of have you had of a history of uh, and then what kind of injuries have come out of those accidents? Uh, one of my cases, um, when he was 17, he was going duck shooting on, um, in Lake Lakshilan and he was travelling with his brother at 10 o'clock on a Sunday morning and unfortunately he had an accident and his brother was killed in the same accident. A so a road traffic accident, my client has a brain injury and he's non-verbal, he cannot move, he cannot talk. Like it is so sad, but his parents are amazing people. And sorry, when, and you say, when you say accident, was it a road traffic accident? A road traffic accident. Wow. So they were just carrying their normal business. They were just going duck shooting. That's their hobby down there. That was one. Um, another client um, wa had got meningitis at age two. It was undiagnosed and he's ventilated since the age of two and he's currently 17 years of age. He's a joy. He is paralyzed from his neck down, but he can talk, thankfully. And he is a joy to meet. He's in fifth year in a community college. He has a nurse with him 24 seven and his nurse travels to school with him. Now, how, how hard is that on a young fellow? You know, it is so hard, but he's amazing. And he recently had music therapy and he adores uh, rugby. He goes to all the Ireland and the Leinster matches. So he's well known, he's, he's very popular, this guy. And his rendition of Ireland's call with the music therapist went viral on the Irish Rugby oh, Twitter right. feed. Okay. So, I mean, like, you know, the family, his parents are just inspirational. Mm. They just, um, you know, it's just whatever. It's, it, they take the M out of impossible. They make everything possible for him. 
and the plan is that he will go to Trinity College because Trinity College have an amazing course for people with an intellectual disability. It's TCPID, it's the Trinity College special course for people that need extra supports. And um, it has Ireland fund backing and it's amazing third level course that, that he may go to. And uh, that particular course, um, a lot of companies come in then and help Trinity by giving the students a work placement, like Good Bodies Help, CPL Help. Um, a lot of really good companies give these students work experience and they, they, they're very part of society then. So this is like what we'd be aiming for for that client. And, and so does your relationship with that uh, patient, does that continue for you know, into infinitum or, you know, is there a stage where no, they, they, you try no, to there's in, a stage in, in, if family in, in, decide um, the they don't person? no longer need a case manager. OK, uh, that's it. Yeah. You know, that there's no I have a contract, but in the contract, there is a term that either side can uh, terminate yeah. the contract. And I suppose your goal is to make the p patient uh, as independent as they can. Is that is that the goal? My goal is to help them achieve their full potential. Mm, okay. And I also do this on my blog on the website, whereas I share everything I find out about. I'm constantly researching mm. um, like anything that could help a family with a loved one with a disability. And I put it on the blog. I share it on LinkedIn. Um, I put it on Twitter, maybe, or even on the website itself. There's a great resource there of information. What is your website there again, Siobhan? MCS Case Management. Oh, great. We'll put that up on, on the podcast here. Thank you. Bottom, so looking, thank you. Listen, thank you very much for your time. It's been a really David, interesting conversation. Uh, and so if any solicitor wanted to instruct you or contact you, how would they go about it? Info at mcscasemanagement.ie. And it's on my phone number is on the website. Thank you very much, David. No so problem. appreciate it's you taking pleasure. time out today. It's been a pleasure to have you here. We sincerely wish you all the best for the future. Thank you, David. Thank you.